When I shine, it's not my forehead. It's my performance, and it's not a little. It's spectacular. I don't know why to let a goth do my makeup anyways. I'm not a goth. I just like wearing black. We're going live in five, Whoa. four, I get the feeling three, I've done this two, before. One. It's time for Day Ja Boo! The game where you never know what will happen next. Or do you? And here's the host of Deja Vu, Mia Stark. Thank you, Mia. Thank you. Thank you, Mia. Or should I say, Arigato? <laughs> As you know, each week we broadcast from a different middle school, and this week we've come all the way to Japan. <laughs> so, before your sushi starts to stink, let's introduce today's contestants. Contestant number one is the youngest of six siblings. He likes eating pizza and playing sports team with his friends. His secret talent is belching his way through the entire alphabet. Please welcome Connor Stintworld. <laughs> Contestant number two belongs to country clubs on three different continents. In her spare time, she enjoys playing squash and reading historical romance novels. Her secret talent is pointing out other people's grammatical errors. How about a big hand for Quinn Vandalay? Contestant number three wants to open her own granola-based food company when she grows up. She likes rock climbing and organic cotton sheets. Her secret talent is identifying edible plants in the forest. Give it up for Taylor Buckins. And finally, contestant number four believes in unicorns. She loves baking cupcakes for her friends and collecting stuffed animals. Her secret talent is impersonating Taylor Swift. Let's welcome Madison Cogwell. All right, everybody, our research staff has gone back into your lives and discovered some events that even you might have forgotten. Today, we're going to give you a chance to redo those events. There will be four rounds. Each round is based on a mistake that one of you made. All four of you will participate in each round and will be scored by our panel of illustrious judges, Katie, I love you all! Eva! That's my name, don't wear it out! And Leah! Today's winner will walk away with $100,000 in cold, hard cash! <laughs> we'll be right back with round one after these important messages for our sponsors. Again? Don't you have some death metal to listen to or something? I told you I'm not a goth. Yeah, and Kermit's not a toad. Kermit's not a toad. He's a frog. Ugh. Never mind. Yeah, sure. I love my job. I mean, it's not easy. I have to deal with people like Britney Scissorhands or whatever her name is. But most girls my age are sitting in history class thinking about Sean Mendez. I get to travel. Yes, I meet a lot of stupid, stupid people. Oh, look at me! I can belch the alphabet! <coughs> Has this ever happened to you before? Oh, sorry, I forgot. You're a klutz. Of course it has. You were born a klutz. The Klutz Proof 6 was born for you. Welcome back to Deja Vu. Welcome back. It's time for 
round one. So let's head out to our first flashback zone. Tom, Jerry, time to work your deja voodoo! <laughs> Thanks, Leah. Our first flashback zone is inspired by an event from the life of contestant number four, Madison Cogwell. Maddie, can I call you Maddie? How are you feeling? This is so exciting! Squee! Daisy Silky Cheeks is my good luck charm and she's never let me down! Well, let's see if Daisy Silky Cheeks can help you relive this moment from your life. Tom, what is Maddie's deja vu moment? Is that a new color lipstick? Oh, right. Madison, close your eyes. You're four years old. You're playing with blocks at the house of your best friend, Maggie Plunk. You're building castles and unicorn stables. It was so much fun until Maggie Plunk knocked down your castle and stepped on your stable. Oh, you are not a happy camper. Your beautiful castle was nothing but a pile on the floor. Your unicorns flew away to better pastures. You looked straight at Maggie and called her a stupid poo-poo head. <laughs> and do you remember what happened next? We proceeded to go and literally make Maggie plunk into a poo-poo head. <laughs> but don't worry, because now is your chance to relive that moment. Hopefully without the smelly ending this time. <laughs> Behind you are 100 blocks. Contestants, you and your friends have two minutes to build your own castles, and then you alone have two more minutes to knock over the other castles while somehow protecting your own. Ready? Okay then. Hey there, you know what to do. You just have to day ja vu. Now keep your standing and tear the others down. But remember, no physical contact with each other or you're automatically disqualified. Castles were outstanding. 
but Madison was the only one that was standing out in the end. <laughs> Connor seriously needs to learn how to use a tissue, but bonus points for entertainment value. I really expected better from the granola queen. My pick for Princess of the Palace is Ditsy Twinkle Pants. <laughs> All of her castles were terrible. Madison's was only a little bit un-terrible. That's grammatically incorrect and also unfair. Well, that's deja vu for you. After one round, Madison leads the pack. We'll be back with deja vu all over again after these words from our sponsors. <laughs> She was born rich and boring. She just needs to learn from her mistakes. I really think that someday she'll thank me for what I did today. Go, unicorns! Get away from me, you Beetlejuice wannabe. I know. Welcome back to Deja Vu. There were a few surprises in round one, including a cameo by good old Japanese seismic activity. <laughs> Tom and Jerry have taken the contestants to their next location for round two. Let's find out where they are. Thanks, Mia. We're here in the school dance studio and the four contestants can't wait for round two. My lovely partner, Jerry, is here to tell us what to expect. Uh, our next victim is Quinn. <laughs> Just kidding, Quinn. You know we love you. When our dear Quinn was in third grade, she joined the Brave Bowlers. Isn't that right? But do you remember when you finished your competition and won? You danced like no one was watching, but someone was. Julia Wiggins, the most popular girl in third grade, came up to you and said, Girl, I could dance better than you if I was on crutches with my shoelaces tied together, carrying a backpack of bowling balls. <laughs> and you haven't danced since. What a shame. But now it's time to go back and relive that moment. Round two combines brain bowl and dancing. It's brain dancing! Here's how it works. You'll be judged strictly on your dance style. Using Julia Wiggins' words as inspiration, we're going to make it harder for you by putting you on crutches, tying your shoelaces together, and making you wear a backpack filled with bowling balls. That's right, honey. I mean, Jerry, but we're also going to give you a chance to relive, uh, remove those impediments. Every now and again, you'll hear this sound. Uh, I don't think... Just go with it. Right. So when you hear the 
buzzer, the buzzer cow, you will be asked a question. The first contestant to hit their buzzer and answer the question correctly gets to remove one impediment and name the next style of music. Contestants, are you ready? Uh, Cheerleaders, are you ready? Yeah! Hey there, you know what to do. You just have to day ja boo. Sushi traditionally wrapped in pressed fish eggs. I'm sorry, that's incorrect. All organic Brussels sprout wrap. <laughs> I'm afraid not. Rainbow fruit roll up. Ooh, so close, but I'm afraid not. Edible seaweed. Correct. Connor, name your music style. Um, polka. You got it. Japan is over 6,800 of these. What are they? People? <laughs> <laughs> Too bad. So sad. Uh, Pokemon! Um, seriously? No. The answer is not Pokemon. Imbeciles. The answer is an island. That is correct. There are over 6,800 islands in the Japanese archipelago. Uh, Gary? Does that mean what I think it means? It sure does, Tom. It's time for our final bonus round. Whoever answers the next question correctly gets to remove all remaining impediments for the last dance set. Quinn, you answered the last one correctly. What's your favorite genre? Historical romance. Wow. Sorry, Quinn. This is a dance-off, not a book club. But here's some nice tango for you. Which sweet unicorn is the youngest pony that loves to bake yummy snacks for her friends? Oh, oh, oh! You've got to be kidding me! It's Sweetie Belle! Everybody knows that! Correct! The answer is Sweetie Belle. And now for the final dance set, name your music. Anime songs! It was. That's right, Tom. The judges are going to have a hard time deciding this one. Back to you, Mia. Wow. Now I know why they called a dance off. Their dancing was really off. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what the judges thought. I was literally moved to tears. Their moves leapt from the dance floor to my heart. The passion, the soul. I love you all. I don't. I mean, really? None of the contestants could dance their way out of a paper bag. Although, I do have to say, I was impressed by Connor's interpretive dance of a caterpillar becoming a butterfly. I just have a few words of advice. Never dance again. Seriously, that part about dancing like no one is watching, no one should ever have to watch something like that again. Well, it sounds like the judges loved all the contestants, but they have to choose one as the winner. So, how about the judges? Who will it be? Madison! The unanimous verdict is in, and the Deja Vu Brain Dance of Champion is Madison! Hey! Don't go away. We have two more exciting rounds of Deja Vu right after this.
this. And cut. Okay, people, we're going to be back in two minutes. Let's get ready for the next round. Take one more step towards me, and I'll make you wear nothing but pink for a week. Yo, Connor, those are some pretty sweet moves, but you don't have to use the crutches anymore. Yes, I do. Ugh, that was totally unfair. Who could actually answer a question like that? Even when she answered the stupid question, she danced like a baby giraffe on ice. <laughs> Nailed it. Don't worry, Taylor. The pixie dust girl's luck can't hold out. Yeah, come on. I need to have my granola girl before the next round. Maddie, you're like totally like the most like, you know, just like, like totally seriously. I know, right? The other contestants didn't even know Sweetie Belle. Who doesn't know Sweetie Belle? I know, right? They're like so like, you know, just like, like totally. Who doesn't know Sweetie Belle? I'll tell you who doesn't know Sweetie Belle. Anyone over the age of three who has half a brain. Knowing the name of some infantile, fictitious equestrian cartoon is not the same as possessing even a shred of common sense. Knowing the quadratic equation, that's common sense. <laughs> Yay! I find it hard to believe that I'm actually in the same school as people like that. How did they even get accepted here? As for Madison, I'm convinced she's cheating. I don't know how, but I'm going to find out. And when I do... Welcome back to Deja Vu, the game that's already happened to you. We're here in the land of cute vending machines and giant monsters. Speaking of monsters, it's time for round three. Tom and Jerry, where is our next flashback zone? Boo! Ah! Wow, you sure scared me. Jerry, it's, it's me, Tom. I'm so, so sorry. I didn't mean to scare you. I could never hurt you. You mean everything to me. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. Uh, yeah, Tom, I know it was you. I was acting for the camera. Ooh. Right. For round three, we've gone deep into the creepy bowels of the school. That's right, Tom. It's the perfect location for the next flashback. Isn't that right, Connor? Let's go back to your sixth birthday. Your dad asked you to go down into the basement to get your birthday present. You were really excited because you thought it might be a bicycle. But your dad was testing you. He knew you were scared to go into the basement because of zombies. You opened the door, walked down three steps, turned around screaming, and ran straight to your room. You didn't come out for two days. Don't worry, because we're going to give you a chance to relive that moment. There's a present waiting for one of you in the studio. You just have to escape from this basement and get there. Oh. But you might bump into a few of our friends along the way. Hey there, you know what to do. You just have to dance. All we have to do is get back to the studio? That's easy. See you guys later. Wait a minute, you're going without us? Shouldn't we stick together? You might get scared. <laughs> scared? <laughs> scared isn't in my vocabulary. Please take me with you. Please, I get scared by zombies. I'm fine, but you better pull your own weight. This way. I don't think so. I have a photographic memory. I know for a fact that it's this way. Think whatever you want. The way out is this way. Fine. I guess it's just you and me then. And now it's just you. Daisy Silky Cheeks, I'll get you out of here. I promise. Okay, I can do this. No. What would Applejack do? 
Do you smell that, Daisy? It's apple cinnamon Pop-Tarts. Follow your nose. Stop. What? I stepped on something squishy. smart enough to figure it out, which means they'll trick me. Well, I won't be fooled by them. I'll go this way. Wait, if they really know how smart I am, they know I'd figure out their trick. So they'll make their real way out the way I first guessed. I'll go that way. Okay, ha ha, very funny. Okay, very funny, ha ha. Well, the joke's on you, Madison, because there's no such thing as zombies. Legit. What's the code? Friendship is magic. The code is friendship is magic. Well, Daisy, if you can't trust a talking zombie in a dark basement, who can you trust? Let's go! Alright, we're almost out. The exit is right over there. Behind those z zombies? Right, but don't worry. I have a plan. I read somewhere that the one thing that zombies can't stand is granola. Wait, seriously? Oh yeah, and guess what I happen to have with me? So what's the plan? You head over there and get their attention. Lead them back over here. I'll hide behind that corner, and as soon as they go past, I'll sprinkle the floor with granola so they can't come back. Just be yourself. I'm sure you'll think of something. What a sucker. <laughs> At least he makes good bait. Yo, zombies! You might have ruined my sixth birthday, but I've learned a few tricks since then. Can I have it? Who would 
possibly want that except for a goth. I'm not a goth. I thought you were supposed to get me out of here. I could have sworn it was right here. Out of all the zombies in the world, I had to get one with no sense of direction. I was supposed to be out of here right now. Now I'm going to lose the round. So the other day, my friend and I did not were talking. talking. And I Jai, wake up, Jai, 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 come on, wake up, wake up, Jai, Jai, what, what, what? So anyways, after Joey was knocked out, I moved on to my friend Tyler. and send them off to get ready for a final round. Madison is our current leader, but Connor is not far behind. The other contestants are losers with no hope of winning anything, but they'll do their best anyway, cause this is TV. <laughs> Tom and Jerry, what do you have in store for us next? Well, Nia, we're here in the... We're here. I'm here in the school cafeteria. Where have you been? We're on. Sorry, I was faking this. Tom? Thanks, Jerry. We're here in the school cafeteria for today's final round because this is where young Taylor Buckins began her lifelong hatred of processed foods. Close your eyes and think back to the day in the second grade when Billy Fredmore spilled his chocolate pudding all over you. You got so mad, you threw a whole bag of marshmallows at him just as the teacher walked in, and she blamed the whole thing on you. You've hated processed foods ever since, and secretly, in your heart, you've hated Billy Fredmore too. Well, now it's time to let it all go, because our final round is a deja food fight. The rules are simple. Get as much food as possible on your opponents while avoiding getting hit yourself. Remember, the judges will be looking for style as well. Contestants, in your places. Is everybody ready? Hey there, you know what to do. You just have to deja food fight.
Wow, what a round. All the contestants put up a good fight, but Madison really dominated the second half. Let's see what the judges have to say. Back to you, Mia. Well, thanks, Tom. I'd love to find out what the judges think, but there seems to be a small problem. They seem to have left. Uh, what do you mean, they? Well, what a surprise. The judges are joining us right here in the flashback zone. So it looks like Madison is pretty much wrapped up. How about it, judges? Sure does, Tom. There's just one itsy little problem. What's that? She cheated! That's right. Penelope Dainty Pants thought she could pull a fast run on us. And she wasn't working alone. She had help. And it was an inside job. <gasps> Think about it, you one-celled organisms. A tower of boxes that falls by itself. A trivia question that only she could answer. A magical cart full of pies appearing in the middle of a food fight. Not only did she have help, but he was stupidly obvious. He? That's right, Twinkle Twinkle Strawberry Lips had a helper who was right here the whole time. Tom, is this true? How could you? I did it for you! What? I did it for us! We're not making much on this stupid show. Madison came to me and offered me half of the $100,000 if I could guarantee she would win. Jerry, I know this is going to be a shock to you because I haven't let out my true feelings, but I like you. Oh, Tom, you're an idiot, but I kind of like you too. Aww. Heads are going to roll for this. Madison Cogwell, you are a disgrace to all game show contestants everywhere. Not only do you lose, but you will be banned from all digital networks in the future. Whatever. And all mention of unicorns and ponies will be banned as well. No! Tom, in light of your reasons for doing this, we won't fire you. But you will receive a demotion. Mia Stark, you too. Me? What did I do? You are the leader and therefore responsible for the actions of your staff. Not fair! On the bright side, congratulations, Connor. You're the winner. So what's my new job gonna be? <laughs> so have you ever been on a game show before? No! All right, Connor, this is so here. exciting! Here. All right, people, two minutes! Aren't you excited we're in Japan? No. Come on! 30 minutes of doing my makeup and you're still not done? I'm sorry, Miss Bree. It's just that you have a little shine on your forehead. I do not have a little shine on my forehead. When I shine, it's not my forehead. It's my performance and it's not little. It's spectacular. I don't know why the little goths wear makeup anyway. I'm not a goth, I just like wearing black. We're going live! Whoa. Five. I get the feeling I've Three, done this before. Two.